so we are back back in Sydney back home holiday over all gone four weeks just BAM oh, snap snap gone gone in a snap I can't click yeah wow what a whirlwind Asianatic trip that was I don't know um, but yeah we've been back for the last three or four days um, had time to settle back into daily life I've started work two days ago oh gosh yeah but I thought it would be nice to just kind of share a few of the thoughts I had on uh, the experiences we had the places we went uh, just my thoughts on the whole whole trip I guess <laughs> but firstly uh, things that feel a bit different since I've gotten back uh, I'm definitely fatter uh, a lot of my clothes that fit when I left don't fit now and uh, some of the clothes that I bought that fit when I was on holiday also do not fit now um, I thought all the walking that we did every day would offset the amount of just eating and junk food and stuff that we had uh, but it did not offset anything yeah uh, I think you need to do more than just like 10 kilometers of walking every day which I think we did on average 10 to 15 kilometers worth of walking uh, I, I mean I think if we didn't do all that walking it would have been a lot worse but yeah uh, especially in actually I was gonna say I was gonna narrow it down to one country, but I think every country, Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, Shanghai, we did so much walking. I think by the time we were in Shanghai, the last few days were just like, we were so tired. We, our feet just kind of like gave up, like within one hour of getting up and starting walking around. It was, yeah, we just needed to rest like every other hour. We had to find a cafe, get a coffee or a drink or something so we have an excuse to sit down. But yeah, um, that probably also contributed to the fattening. Oh, yeah, so uh, I'm gonna have to do something about that now that we're back. I mean, we say that now, I think everyone says that after a trip, but uh, we're pretty serious. Uh, we already agreed that we're gonna buckle down and, you know, grr, exercise, eat right. Also, I am a lot darker. I have a very, I'm not sure if it's a very noticeable tan or just a, a regular tan, but yeah, I'm, I'm a lot darker. But, uh, you know, we're heading into winter now. Not much sun. I'm in an office all day, uh, away from the sun. Uh, I'll probably pale enough. I don't, I don't know. I don't like it when I'm tanned. Yeah, I, I kind of want to like lose the tan a little and that will happen within time. Anyway, just some other kind of general thoughts about the trip. I mean, everywhere we went, the food was... I don't, I don't think we had one bad meal while we were on holiday. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think very hard, but no like everything was at the very least above average and uh i think that's also what contributed to the fattening staying in myeongdong was dangerous there uh there was so much good street food around uh, a lot of restaurants i mean i think a lot of the stuff around there was catered to tourists obviously but you know it was still really good and we did venture out into seoul and had some nice meals at other places as well but yeah it was it was really good there um w one thing that happened was i i got a lot of constipation <laughs> i think it was possibly from the uh fried cheese uh, street food because uh, every time I ate that every night I had that I wouldn't be able to poo and uh, that was that was not pleasant at all uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a video a whole video on the street food that we ate just listing them all and I, I've got like video of all the pretty much all the the street food we ate and my gosh I wish the, the street food in Myeongdong there was like just such a wide variety of stuff there and uh, 
it was just so simple. It wasn't just, it wasn't like trying to be too fancy or anything. There was like just, you know, fish cake soup or like sausage. Just all different kinds of, of street food there. Anyway, I'll cover that in a whole other video. I mean, uh, I'm probably gonna put this video up before all those other ones. I've got, uh, I took so much video when uh, I was over there. I didn't take many photos, but like I recorded with my uh, phone the whole time. But anyway, back to the food. Yes. Um, so Seoul, uh, we had a lot of different traditional dishes. We had like ginseng chicken, dokbukki, uh, bibimbap, all, all the standard kind of Korean stuff, but you know, it's in Korea, it's like genuine authentic stuff or whatever. But um, yeah, that, that was really nice. Well, let's just move on to Jeju now. Jeju, we didn't actually eat that many like restaurant sitting down meals. Uh, we were on tour for two days. The meals were taken care of, lunches at least. Those were pretty good. Uh, one day we had the famous black pork from Jeju. And then another day we had this really, really nice buffet. Um, just like 10 kinds of like Korean meat there. It was just like, heaven for me because like I like meat um, but other than that um, I don't really recall actually going to too many restaurants uh, I think we had Korean fried chicken one time oh and another time we had uh, we went into a um, it was like a, a restaurant but it was like it was kind of empty uh, and we had like crab <laughs> and then it turned out to be $200 uh, <laughs> like 200 Australian dollars uh, it was it was like the best crab that we ever had though but uh, we didn't really expect to like just have like a very impromptu meal at a really expensive place to eat but that was really nice um, Singapore of course all the food's gonna be great there's like just so much to eat there like Singapore Malaysian food is just like I mean like I'm Malaysian um, and you know stuff that I grew up with as well uh, just oh gosh chili crab uh, salted egg crab, uh, all the local delicacies, uh, kaya toast with a soft boiled egg, just so simple but so delicious. Uh, the local coffee, iced coffee and iced tea, tetarek, uh, all very very delicious. Um, and then uh, Shang, Shanghai as well. Great food, great Chinese dishes, great Shanghai dishes, uh, some really fancy stuff as well. Um, I'm pretty much gonna cover this in all the vid little videos that I'm gonna be posting after this. Um, food, yes, great food in Asia. Asians know how to eat. Then there was the shopping. Of course, the shopping. Uh, Korea, we were in Myeongdong. That's pretty much just all you do in Myeongdong when, you, when you're in that area. We were like just sleeping right above like hundreds of shops. Uh, Tian was so excited to be able to get so much Korean cosmetics because from what I understand they're they're very good quality um, but there was a lot of like clothes and stuff as well I, I pretty much whenever I go on holiday uh, I buy <laughs> the next year's worth of outfits t-shirts pants whatever and I just wear them and I don't really buy much locally because I don't know I, I'm just not a fan of the stuff we have here in Sydney and Australia but yeah in short <laughs> we bought a lot of clothes yeah a lot of clothes Tian bought a lot of cosmetics um, and I bought a lot of random shit like heaps of random crap I bought a whole lot of hats I bought a lot of like little line friends toys and stuff like that um, yeah, a lot of useless crap, but you know, that's what we do when we go on holiday. Like, I think it, possibly an Asian thing. We like to eat, we like to shop. We're very materialistic and uh, <laughs> I especially, I, I like to spend a lot of money. And I did, I spent a lot of money, probably more money than I had to actually spend. And now I have to kind of really tighten the belt now I'm here, which also works in my favor because I can't actually buy lunches anymore. I have to, you know, prepare lunches at home, spend 20 bucks on a few things and prepare little lunch boxes for myself and uh, not spend like 20 to $30 a day on like ordered food, which uh, reminds me, the food is so damn cheap over there. Like, 
oh my gosh, it's like for Australian $2, you can get like a big bowl of noodles in Malaysia and it's delicious noodles with barbecue pork and you can't get anything like that here. It's really frustrating. But then again, we get paid more. It's all proportional, whatever. Sightseeing, yes, um, we did get to do a lot of that as well. Unfortunately though, in Korea it was so bloody cold. We did not expect this. It's May, uh, it's supposed to be spring, but it was single digits cold there. Single digits Celsius, which is like, I don't know, negative Fahrenheit or something. I do not know how that temperature system works. But yeah, it was like seven degrees, like on average every day. So it was kind of hard to go to some places because we didn't bring jackets or anything. We thought it was gonna be very mild, uh, the weather, but it was not. I mean, I wanted to visit Cheonggaecheon. That's like the big river that goes through Seoul. It's really pretty at night, but it was like almost freezing temperatures and we forced ourselves to go there one night. Um, but no, we couldn't. I mean, think, I think there was only one day where we could just safely wear t-shirts out. That was like the second day we were there and we thought, oh, this is gonna be nice weather, but no, it was not very like warm at all. Yeah. Cheju was a little better, but uh, we only actually had one good day of weather there and that was one of our tour days, which really was not what I would have liked because the other two days which we had free, I was hoping to take Tian to Udo Island, which is a very nice little like island off the coast of Jeju Island, where, you know, there's nice beaches and you can like ride a bike around. It's really peaceful and relaxing. But one day it was raining and the other day it was just so, so foggy. Uh, we couldn't really do anything. It was kind of scary. Um, Singapore, very hot, very humid. Uh, I think Tian uh, didn't really care for that, but uh, I, I've been there so many times I'm sort of like, it takes a, maybe a, a day to get used to it for me and then it's fine. Uh, surprisingly when we moved over to Malaysia, which was just like across the, the sort of canal that separates Singapore to Johor Bahru in Malaysia, which was where we were staying, the weather was quite like surprisingly cool. Um, it rained every afternoon and then right after the rain, it would be cool. And when I say cool, I mean like maybe 23, 24 with a lot of humidity, but compared to like 30, 30-ish every day with the same amount of humidity. Actually, it was less humid, but like still 23, 24, but like, yeah, it, <laughs> comparatively, it was a lot cooler there. Um, I think Shanghai had the best weather of all. Um, we didn't really need to wear jackets at all. We left jackets with my mom and dad who we met in um, Malaysia and they <laughs> very kindly took them home for us, which was really nice. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, I think I was supposed to be talking about seeing sights. Uh, <laughs> Jeju, we, uh, well, pretty much we got to go on two tours. We saw a lot of different things on Jeju. Uh, in Singapore, uh, we kind of got to see some places, but it was mostly just shopping centers. We got to see Marina Bay Sands and uh, the gardens by the bay, which were really, really nice. The big domes, air conditioned, wow, very nice. Love air conditioning. You need to go there when you're in Singapore. And when I say there, I mean anywhere with air conditioning, but you can go to the gardens by the sands or garden by the bay, the two big domes, go there. Yeah, go see some plants or something. Yeah. Shanghai, we didn't really see any sights. It was just the Bund, the Bund, I don't know how you pronounce it. Tian gave me a lot of crap for not being able to pronounce it. But yeah, we, we saw the Bund and most of the other time was just shopping and eating and spending time with family. But we did go to three <laughs> amusement parks on this trip. We went to Lotte World in Korea. We went to Universal Studios in Singapore and Shanghai Disneyland. And we had so much fun in all of them. Universal Studios, we only really spent like four hours, but it was a really fun four hours, maybe three or four hours. Um, Lotte World, um, that was a lot of fun. Last time I went to Lotte World, it was by myself. And I didn't go on any rides because 
Uh, it was a lot of couples, a lot of young couples, and I was just by myself. So I just watched people on rides, I saw their stage show, and I ate a hot dog and bought some crappy souvenirs. And <laughs> I still had fun then, and but I had more fun now because I was with someone, I could ride rides, and I didn't feel like a loser. Uh, Shanghai Disneyland, we spent the whole day. That was a lot of fun. I was very, very happy. I love Disney stuff. Um, their Tomorrowland is amazing. Kind of reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy, like sort of when they're on that planet and they meet uh, and Star Lord, Groot, and. Rocket and Gamora all meet for the first time there before they get arrested and all that. It was it reminded me of that. That was pretty cool. So that's kind of it for sights and stuff. I don't know. Uh, look, I'm just going off the top of my head here. Nothing has been prepared. So if I was to say what was my favorite part of the trip, I don't know. Um, I enjoyed everything that we did. I mean, I like amusement parks a lot, so maybe one of the amusement park days, maybe all of them. Uh, but I don't think there wasn't really any, there weren't many actually dull moments. I think there were a few moments where we didn't know what to do and we were just kind of like walking around aimlessly um, here and there, but uh, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad in the end. Um, and um, my God, I think I already said this, It the time flew towards the end. I mean, at the beginning of a trip, you feel like, you know, I've got all the time in the world. One month, that's such a long time. I'm, we're gonna just like take our time, do whatever. Uh, we can relax, be happy. And you know, you're aware of it. You're in the moment more than you are towards the end. I felt like I was not so much in the moment and just kind of thinking, oh no, this is all gonna end soon. This is all gonna end soon. I mean, I have a litmus test for myself as to whether how awake I am. I kind of look at my hand and if I can make a connection between what I'm seeing and my hand doing this, that means I'm okay. I usually do that when I'm like either super drunk or when I'm super tired and uh, it kind of, I can kind of tell if I'm either of those things. And I did that a couple of times towards the end of the trip and I wasn't tired or drunk or anything, but I couldn't make that connection. It was like, I was sort of drifting in a dream anyway. Uh, in, in conclusion, I guess, um, I'm, I'm really happy with the trip. Um, it was relaxing, it was invigorating, you know, connecting with my my new wife and just, you know, spending some much needed time together and enjoying each other's company, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I think the, one of the most important things that I was hoping to get out of this is to feel invigorated creatively. And the way I did that was by making a lot of videos. I mean, shooting a lot of videos, which I did with my phone of all things. I brought four, uh, three cameras. I brought this video camera, which I'm recording this on, a still camera, which I've used also before to record video. And I brought a GoPro and I used none of them. I only used my phone. And um, because right before, uh, leaving for the trip, I got this app called like Cyberlink Director, which made, which allowed me to cut and um, edit and um, export movies uh, and, um, on my phone. And I thought, hmm, why don't I use this to um, just in not real time, but like as we're on the trip, I'll record our day and then cut it at night and then post it online. And uh, obviously that didn't actually happen. I have got like 25 more days worth of, of footage that I need to cut and put up, but um, that will all eventually come online. But I thought I'd do this one first while uh, it's all still fresh in my mind. And I thought that would be like, you know, a good way to kind of get back into this because it's really easy to do it there. I don't really need to like load up Adobe Premiere, copy everything to the computer, then like be on a mouse and like have to sit in like a comfortable position, like set up my laptop on a table to do it all. I can just like, you know, the TV could be on and I could just be doing that or I could be on the plane and doing it. And, and it really, and it worked. I was able to, you know, put about, I think I've only put like five or six videos up, uh, but 
you know, it made me feel like, wow, I'm doing something. It was, it was very satisfying. I think before I left, I was very concerned that I'd lost the drive. I wouldn't be able to find it again. And I think I found it again. Uh, whether or not anyone actually watches any of these videos is another thing. Uh, half of the stuff I've put online has barely cracked 10. I don't think this video will crack 10 views either, uh, unless like most of them are mine. And the ones that are already up, I think at least minimum three or four of the existing views are my own views. So who is this video for? I don't know, maybe just me. Maybe there's uh, one of the five subscribers on my channel who aren't me uh, might, might be watching this too. But, um, but yes, I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling that I can move forward from this. I feel like I can create more content to put on online. I might be doing more unboxings, um, but I will definitely be putting up all our adventures to this channel. And I hope, you know, people will watch them. And if not, that's cool too. Um, I don't do this really for the views, obviously. I don't promote myself, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I like doing it. Um, I'm having fun doing it. And I think I found that spark again. I'm in a better place now than I was before we, we went out. And that's good. I don't know what else to say, but yeah, uh, all in all, great trip had a lot of fun, bought a lot of crap, and ate a lot of shit. Uh, oh, and Tian's home now, which means I have to stop. Well, I don't need to stop, but I'm gonna stop now because conveniently, I've said all I need to say. At doing stuff with the jewels on YouTube And don't forget to subscribe Oh, doing stuff with the jewels on YouTube Come on, stop on by